Hello everybody and welcome back to the Garibaldi Red podcast for what seems another huge Forest game. It gets bigger and bigger every single week, doesn't it, as Forest travel to Goodison on Sunday for a huge clash in front of the TV cameras where the Forest fans will be in full voice, hopefully, after a pretty disappointing week off the pitch. But on the pitch, Forest hoping to get a result because it is needed and joining me to discuss all of that. No Dave, sadly, no Mark. Who better to call up on the subs bench? I promise you weren't <laughs> third choice, Sarah. Um, Sarah Clapson joins us, Reds correspondent. Sarah, how are you? You well? Hello. Yes, good, thank you. Good. Good. It's a it's another big game on Sunday and, and we're all going to be there. And, and it just feels like, doesn't it, Sarah, with these remaining games that it does get bigger every week, but it, but it also seems like just 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 the nerves go into the games and you can feel it in the crowd and and obviously Everton have a, you know they've been in a similar situation to Forest so so it, it um, almost becomes the, the the whole points deduction thing and relegation and I think Goodison really will be it almost I, I don't think any of the crowd will have the fingernails left by the end of it, will they? <laughs> yeah I mean it's the PSR derby isn't it and it's yeah. a, a big game at the, the bottom end of the table as well I think a lot of it is going to be about who deals with that pressure and that that tension because there's pressure on Everton as as much as there is on on Forest as well. So I think the mental side of it is going to be really important on Sunday. Um, I, I don't want to mention it again, but set pieces will be crucial. Forest need to deal with them. Um, obviously, we know the the respective records when it comes to set pieces in the Premier League this season. So that's, I mean, it's a, a concern um but hopefully there's been a lot of work done on the training ground and hopefully Forest can at least deal with the threat um yeah it, it's such an it, it's such a massive game isn't it just carries so much weight if Forest can get a good result you think what that can do then for the remaining games and how it would change the table I guess the I mean the table could look different anyway because it's on the Sunday there are games on the Saturday that could affect things. So there's so much going on around it. So much, um, so many different subplots that it's just, it's going to be nervy, a scrap. I think it's going to be one of those games and it's who handles it best. Yeah, I suppose you could, yeah, the just, just just the tension. And I think when you look at, at something, you kind of touch on their set pieces and yeah. a problem that, you know, we, we, talk, we talk about every week. And, again. <laughs> yeah, again, and we, get, yeah. and we get sick and tired of talking about it. But Everton will look to utilise that. Sean yeah. Dyke is, Sean Dyke watches Forest most weeks and, and last season he was at the city ground a lot of the time and, and he knows really how to, to do a job on Forest. What's different yep. when we last played them is Steve Cooper was in charge. Now we've got new notes, you know, and when we go away from home, we set up a little bit different, more attacking, kind of more on that on that front foot and in particular, mm. uh, you know, in the in the counter-attacking stages of the game. But you kind of expect that that Everton will look to to just utilise what Forest's weaknesses are and 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 that's the set pieces ultimately. Everton have got, you know, the height in the box. They've got so many players that can take a really good corner and score from them. I think, I, don't, I haven't got the stats to hand, but I think they're in the top five in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think everybody in the Premier League knows what Forest Achilles' heel is. It's blatantly obvious um, and Everton... Uh, absolutely going to pick up on that um you're right about the height I think that's maybe um I mooted it earlier in the week but maybe thinking of going to a back three maybe that might help solve it bringing if if Willie Bolly was fit I, I would absolutely start him um because I think he adds that and he's got that physical presence he's got that experience um Murillo and Andrew on are, are great young talents um who have got bright futures ahead of them and a lot of promise they've done really well but for a game like Sunday if Bolly were fit I, I would absolutely bring him in um whether I don't know bring Nia Carti in for a three if Bolly's not fit I don't know is that maybe a possibility or is that maybe going a bit too negative I think it's going to be interesting to see how Nuno does approach it for still don't have the best of records away from home Still only two wins yeah. this season, so it's an improvement a little bit yeah. on last year. But um, considering how big the away get, the remaining away games are, get a good result, put in a good performance on Sunday, and that really sets 
up the final two away games. Um, and I mean, they, yeah, Burnley and, and Sheffield United, maybe their fates might be decided by the time that Forest play them. Still doesn't mean that they're going to, if anything, it might give them a bit of freedom. So yeah. I, I still think those two are going to be massive games as well and real scraps. So how Forest approach Sunday, how they fair against Everton I think will tell us a lot about how the last two away games are going to go as well so it's going to be interesting to see how Nuno does set things up and whether he um, he gets Forrest on the front foot whether he really wants to go for it um, I think he has to I think you have to in these remaining games yeah I think everything's kind of on the line and yeah it and is I think I think, I think the, the, the fans probably more than more than ever will expect Forrest just to go for it and and mm. you know you're playing a similar team like Everton that have had all the points deductions that are still in a relegation dogfight and and you know there's no reason why Forrest can't go and do a job over them easier said than done much <laughs> yeah, done, isn't it? yeah um, much easier said than done yeah um I just wanted to kind of pick up on the Willy Bolly point and I will state as we're recording this uh, the press conference hasn't been done do you expect many changes Sarah we talk about Yates as well particularly Dominguez maybe mm. coming in over him I'd favour that uh, and I totally agree with you about Bolly and it's interesting to see actually going back to a back three yes Forrest want to go for it but there's one thing that Forrest don't want to do is is concede one or two mm. in the first half because it really could be game over then yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not something that Nuno has done. He's tended to stick with this similar formation. So it would maybe be a bit of a surprise if he does. Um, and obviously he um, he does have a few decisions to make, though, I think. If Alanga is fit, I'd, I'd bring him back in. Um, I think his pace could be really useful and a threat. Um, the suggestion was that it wasn't a serious injury and that he was expected to be in training this week and he should be OK for Everton. So I... Uh, I thought Gio Reyna did pretty well on his first start, but I, I would bring Anthony Alanga back in. I, I just think that, that the the three of, of him, Morgan gibbs White and Callum hudson Adoy, are the, the key um, to, to getting forward and, and getting goals and getting something from it. So I think his pace can be a real... Um, it can cause Everton problems, for sure. I, I think I'll probably agree with you about midfield and bring Dominguez in. Um Ryan Yates hasn't had the best of the, the last two games haven't been his best he had a, those two errors um, last weekend obviously the, the Spurs game not the best um, so if you're going on form I think Dominguez I thought made a difference when he came on um, against Wolves so I think I'll probably make that switch as well um, it's yeah it, it is a tough one though I don't think there's a lot in it um, I think it's quite a a close call. Um, yeah, I, 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 bless him, Paul Ryan Yates, he gets a lot of stick and he, he, he's got a lot of grief after last weekend, again, particularly. Um, I don't, I still think he has a part to play. I don't agree with this whole, he's a, a, a terrible footballer and he should not be playing in the Premier League. I don't agree with that at all. Um, yeah. I, but if you are going on form and if you're going on the last two games, I can absolutely understand the decision or, or at least the option of bringing Dominguez in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think, I think kind of Yates, a game against Everton, is it a game for Yates? Is it a, you know, Yates is a player where he almost breaks up the game a lot with mm. fouls. Well, I just don't, I just don't think that will be kind of Forest game. If you were going away, maybe to a top six side or, or possibly top 10, you'd, you'd, you'd argue to play Yates a little bit like Tottenham. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess you could argue either way. It's, yeah. it's going to be a scrap. It's going to be a fight. Do you want somebody with that that battling mentality, which Ryan Yates has? Dominguez has it as well. To be fair, he, he likes getting stuck in, and he's he's good at you know getting the tackles in, and, and um, obviously has that technical side as well. So I, I think it's a fairly close call. I don't think there's a a great deal in it. Yeah, it will be interesting to see. Mm. Um, just kind of wanted to touch on on players like Morgan Gibbs White and Anthony Alanga, and you know Gio Reyna. You know he had a good. A good appearance the other mm. the other day, but you could argue that he didn't he didn't really lead to much. And then the substitutions were questionable. However, I thought you know the young striker Ribeiro did really well. So I'm not saying he's going to start by any stretch of the imagination, but I can imagine him maybe coming on towards the end. And I suppose when you've got players like him on the bench, and then you've also you know we talk all the time about leaders. You know you've got um, Morgan, you've got Alanga. 
they're two players instantly you think they've got to start for Forest for such a big game. They kind of lead that line as such, not just on the pitch, technical ability wise and, and, and football wise, but also mentally. I think when mm. those two are in the squad, I think other players, younger players, particularly more inexperienced players, not not for for one stage saying that these players are inexperienced, but potentially maybe struggling amongst a you know a huge relegation battle and and things off the pitch and on the pitch for Forest. Players like Morgan and and, and Anthony really kind of do lead that line, don't they? Yeah, I mean, if anybody's going to drag Forrest to survive, well, it's going to be Morgan Gibbs-White because he, he's really stepped up in the last few weeks. And he's, I mean, you can see he's, he was fired up last weekend for obvious reasons. But even before that, he looks like he, he's got the bit between his teeth. And I think he enjoys that responsibility and that um, having that kind of the onus on him to, to do something um, and to, to really get the team going. I think he enjoys that. I think he likes having that on his shoulders and it, it kind of, he relishes it in a way. Um, and Forrest need him. He is so, so important. But equally, yeah, the likes of Anthony Alanga, Callum Hudson-Odoi, um, Chris Wood, everybody, it, it's such a cliche, but everybody's got a, a really big role to play. Games like this, at this time of the season, you need collective performances. You need your individual players to step up and stand out and, um, do incredible things but you also need to play well as a team you also need to play well collectively um, and I, I, we sound like a bit of a broken record talking about it all the time but that Fulham game was the epitome of that it was a, a terrific collective performance um, and obviously it got the result so it's going to take I mean Forrest have shown what they can do under Nuno that's the standard that's the blueprint um, it's going out there and, and do it again and, and again and again and again. Um, you just like to think, get a bit of momentum at this time and it can go a long way. We saw that last season. Um, I think a, a positive result on Sunday would, wouldn't just change how things look in the table. It, it would also be a real confidence boost, particularly with everything that's going on, as we said, off the pitch. The fact that the appeal um, hearing is the week after um, the game, Everything like that, I think it would just lift um, lift the mood a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it certainly would. And, do you know, it's funny, I just thought back a year ago, it was kind of last week, that last week a year ago that, that, that Forrest lost the Leeds on that awful night game and we thought we were down and then we played, I think, I think we played Liverpool. I think we mm. played Liverpool the following game. And even though we lost, I think it was 3-2, wasn't it? There was a sense of... I can remember walking out the ground, actually, walking out of Anfield, Sarah, and thinking, I think we're going to be all right. And you kind of mm. had that momentum. And then Forrest took that momentum going forward. I think we played Southampton or Brighton next and, and got one of those crucial wins in, yeah. the, in, in, in the final running. And and that's what you just hope Forrest can do. Um, you know, you'd take, I'd take a draw, but but we need all three. Um, all right then, Sarah. Well, finally, I'll ask you... <laughs> difficult. Oh, you're going to ask a prediction, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am, I am. Oh, Max. Um, how do you... I mean, you... Yeah, um, how do you, how do you, all right then, I won't ask for your score prediction. But all right, are you going to ask me whether it's going to be? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all can you right. See Forrest win? Can you see Forrest winning and, get, or, and, and, and getting finally a third away win of the season? <laughs> I certainly think that they are capable of it. I certainly think that the players are, are, are there. The, the standard we've seen is there. It's applying it. Um, and, and it is shutting out all the... A bit like that for the Gary Baldy banner from the other week. It's shutting out all the outside noise and everything else that that's going on. And um, we mentioned it right at the start. It's who handles the pressure, and some of that falls on on managers. Nuno has to to you know make sure that the players aren't weighed down by by that. It's a fine balance to to, to take, I think, because you need to be you need to know it's there. You need to know the importance of of the game. You need to know where you are in, in the table and that there's a lot riding on it and, and everything else, but you can't be burdened by it. So it's it's a really delicate balance. Managers have to find the right way of, of you know, ensuring the dressing room is in the right frame of mind for that. Um, I think I, it, I suspect we'll all be watching behind um, behind our hands and um, yeah, I think it's going to be nervy. But I'll I, I, Forrest is only capable. Yeah. I, I'm going to very sit on the defence and say that um, 
<clears throat> not, not give an actual answer is what I'm doing. All right, then. Well, I'll give one for you and I'll say that <laughs> on, I'm, I'm, and I'll say that Forrest are going to win. I've got a feeling uh, and yeah, I might just stay in the concourse at Goodison the whole time. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think the nerves are going to handle it. Uh, right. Just quickly before we go, Sarah, got to ask about it. And um, as we record this, we're set to do a podcast as well. So it will be out by the time with the Forest Supporters Trust Chair uh, about the season ticket prices. Mm. Another thing that's dominated the headlines this week, Sarah, not needed for Forest at all, given trying to almost have that um, connection uh, togetherness mm-hmm. with the club and, and, and the fans at the minute at a crucial time. What have you made to it and, and just just the season ticket prices on a whole? It really has been a, a, nothing short of a disaster really, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the timing, it's it's dreadful. Um, and you can, I can completely understand all the, the reaction and the anger and the frustration and, and everything else around it because it it, it wasn't just the price increases. I think it was the messaging around it as well that was just so out of kilter. And it, it was a lot of it was was tone deaf, really. It was not um, it didn't help matters at all in the slightest. Um, I think it, it's it's just at a time when Forrest needed unity, togetherness. The fans are so, so important. That support is it, it's absolutely crucial. Um, the city ground, when it's um, in great voice, when it's like it was um, against Fulham, um, like it has been so many times, you can see what difference it makes to the players. You can see what difference it makes to the team. To risk upsetting that, uh, uh, I think it's, it's just... The timing was so bad and um, I hope that it it doesn't damage that link and that relationship and that the kind of bond and the unity and everything with the crowd and and the team. Um, Because, as I said, Forrest, the players, Nuno, need the fans. Um, And I I just think it was a a massive own goal from the, the, the club to be doing that at this time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, spot on. Totally agree. You can hear mine and Andy's thoughts from the Forest Supporters Trust. Uh, that's out on YouTube, Garibaldi Red, and uh, across all audio platforms, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Right, I think that does us nicely. Uh, safe journey to Goodison on Sunday, Sarah. Uh, fingers crossed in the mm. away end. I'll be. I'll. I'll give you a wave when we've won. <laughs> when we've won three 0 but I'm in. As long as you're not stood in the concourse watching the whole time. Yeah, exactly. As long as I'm. As long as I'm braving it. <laughs> in the away end um, right as always give us a like share and subscribe on YouTube uh, drop us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts because it really helps and we will see you next time come on you Reds for another big forest game on Sunday 